say welcome to another brand new edition, all talking, all dancing, all singing, all holiday. We hope you're having a reasonably wonderful holiday uh, season. No blues, no depressing thoughts on New Year's Eve. Sometimes people get sad on New Year's Eve. I think there was a, an Irving Berlin song called Happy New Year Blues. This New Year's Eve, let's uh, try and think optimistically and make it a uh, very special 1993. I received a release from... Uh, the Ed Sullivan Show, reminding me. Well, of course, I already knew it, that the Ed Sullivan Show is being seen on WWOR-TV, uh, you know, the famous repeats, the classics, on Sunday nights in the old Ed Sullivan spot on this station. And when I read that my good friend London Lee, the rich kid, is being seen 13 times on the Ed Sullivan uh, Show, 13 appearances, I said, i got to get in touch with London, bring him down here to chat with me again, maybe about Ed Sullivan. And let's make this our nostalgic moment. One uh, souvenir of the man who invented... I mean, he, he used to make mistakes, he would make fluffs, but nobody ever followed in his footsteps. Nobody ever was able to do the TV variety kind of a show that Ed Sullivan did all those memory lanes ago. So London Lee is here with me today, as is a young lady creating quite a stir in media circles. Her name is uh, Serene Fortini, and she's part of the group known as White Girls with Soul, and those white girls with soul are getting a lot of uh, attention. The same lady who told me about Garth Brooks, who brought Garth Brooks here about four years ago, when he was, uh, as you know, not known, told me that the red-hot man to watch this year, and he's here right now, is named George Preston. Mr. Preston is from, I guess, the Ozarks. He became famous doing Davy Crockett. We're going to meet him, and he'll sing for us. And I've got Mr. Barry Shapiro. Mr. Shapiro is the uh, chairman of the Long Island uh, Philharmonic Orchestra, and that's something that I think deserves some recognition. We've got what we call a show of shows. Following these words, the big holiday party begins. Don't ever leave us. If you leave us, we'll feel insecure. So be here and keep me secure. Please, stay here. This columnist writes that pumping gas on Christmas Eve is going to become a holiday classic, and we're going to have a sample today by the people making it famous, Mr. Uh, George Preston and Mr. Jeff Sugarman, and the big news, uh, white girls with soul, one half of the group here, anyhow, is that the rich kid, the rich kid is back, and this man is one of my very favorite comedians. Can I tell London Lee? Happy been, New Year. Been Merry too Christmas. long. Merry everything. Been a long time. I, I like people named after cities like Irving Berlin, you know, <laughs> Harold Rome. Who else? Jackie Paris? You're Lo right. London right. Lee. Well, I was born in England, so they named me London after the city of my birth. Thank God I wasn't born in Elizabeth, New Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Lee has been uh, headlining for two years, I read, at Merv Griffin's Resorts. You right. got to tell us what's uh, happening with Merv Griffin. You know, people forget he used to be a band singer with, with Freddie Martin, Merv Griffin. Merv know. Griffin owns a couple of television shows that he not only invented and came up with the idea and owns them. One is called Wheel of Fortune, which is the largest selling show in the history of television. Of the world. <laughs> well, of the world now, right. of the entire world. And Jeopardy is the other one. And they're both Merv Griffins. He also owns a Beverly Hilton Hotel. But I get a call yet from the in Internal Revenue once in a while, how I know all these things. The Paradise Island Hotel. He also uh, has uh, a couple of gambling boats in Chicago. And uh, as I said, he's got, he's got so many enterprises. no gambling about the fact, uh, Mr. Uh, Preston and Mr. Sugarman and Miss. Uh, Fortini. This man is being rediscovered now by a whole new generation, 13 times on Sunday nights here on the Ed Sullivan Show. How can we ask you, not ask you, did you get to meet Ed? Any, any oh, reminiscence? Ed is, it, is it true they used to upset, used to upset the comedians many times by, by cutting their material at, the very, at, at show time? Is that yeah, true? Yeah, in fact, I'll tell you a, a yeah. particular incident. Right. I did so many Ed Sullivan shows. I mean, it was crazy time. Now, he was a wonderful guy. You know, a little nuts, but <laughs> so am I. So it was perfect. You know, my psychiatrist says, you and him will be perfect for each other. Together, right. Yeah. So, like, uh, he did, when Jackie Mason went through that little... With the fingers. With the fingers, uh, I got a phone call at home, and I had about 12 shows to go with him. I had another 12. And he said, I want you to do more shows. I want you to take over Jackie Mason's shows. And I said, well, Ed, you know, he said, yeah, I want you here tomorrow. So like on a Friday, and he wanted me to read everything off the monitor. Right. And I want to read it off the monitor because it killed my timing. He didn't care. That was how he worked. He wanted to read so nobody made a mistake. He knew what you were going to say in front. Right. Uh, they had an afternoon rehearsal, a dress rehearsal. We'd all get dressed up, and they put makeup on you, and you come out, and you do your show for a bus that just came out of uh, uh, Oxford, Mississippi, whatever. <laughs> I like that line. I like that, yeah. Yeah, me too. What a minstrel show. 
So now they got, you, you're going, you do your spot. And let's say he's got me on first in the show, opening the whole show a second. So at the, after the show is completed, he'll say to me, I like what you did, but tonight I want you to go on next to last. Hmm. So I said, well, I mean, why did you change? He said, don't ask me, I know what I'm doing. And he's, another, the, he's the boss, right? Yes. He's the, and he said, he said to me, don't say good evening, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> at the end of your act, say good evening to them. I said, all right, good. I ran right to the psychiatrist, made a call. Doctor, what is, don't worry about it. It'll be okay. Anyhow, the fact is, how can we not make it official? That years ago, London Lee was uh, an older man. Now that he's a juvenile, he's, he's <laughs> right. watching those old repeats. And, and to, be, to be permanently enshrined in, in TV's rerun land, I mean, it's a, it's a, it must be a nice feeling. It to is. Know. 13, 13 shows out of, out of uh, like, uh, right. I guess, 150 or 200 shows, whatever it was. But what goes through your heart and soul and mind watching yourself when you were a little kid? Well, let kid. me tell you what goes through my mind, yeah. too. Okay, first of all, you know, I was born on New Year's Eve. I know. Four days my father thought it was a hangover. I know that. But <laughs> that's a joke. <laughs> yeah, right? Okay, I just thought I'd throw that in. <laughs> Comedian, I have to get jokes. So now, uh, what goes to my mind, this is the truth. I want your people out there to know this. this is yes. the honest to God truth. The first television show I ever did in my career was the Joe Franklin show. That's right. And after I did Joe, Merv saw me on Joe Franklin's show and said, can you bring a tape in? And in those days, there were no tapes. They were called, we call them kinescopes. Right. So I got a kinescope, and I brought it over, and Merv said, you're on my show. And I got the Merv Griffin show. And then from Merv Griffin, I got the Ed Sullivan show. And then before I knew it, the rich kid was flying high. And my family was very wealthy. My father has Swiss money and American banks. I know that. <laughs> and now you're back where you began. <laughs> yes, all back and, all and what, what, I want to tell you, first of all, let me, uh, did you meet this charming lady? This one Serena, half? yeah, she doesn't a, look Jewish. <laughs> <laughs> one half of a group Hi. making much noise and getting all this media attention. What do you want uh, London Lee and the whole world out there to know, uh, Serene, about uh, the progress of... Uh, uh, white girls with soul. Is, everything is moving forward. I'm in the studio a lot, doing a lot of interviews. Joe Franklin show, my second time. Oh, great. I'm loving it. I'm having a great time. We love living you. life. He's good luck to you. He's the best. Yeah. Gonna I'm going to be saying what you said. I was my first show with Joe right. Franklin. Bill Cosby came back and said that here recently. Now also making their first appearance, uh, we're going to set up a little bit of one of your videos. Can we, you, Serene? All right, a new one? Sure. I want you to meet a young man named George Preston, and I notice here that at the age of six, he uh, won a brand new baseball bat for singing <laughs> Davy Crockett. Now, That's right. Now, you ready, ready for what I want to tell you now? Ready for this? Yeah. Because I did my, you know, I happen to know a little bit about that man. Davy Crockett in real life was an embezzler. He was a horrible man. He was, uh, the, you know, the, the, the king of the wild frontier. Was, was the king of the con men. He really, <laughs> no, he was. was. That's a little known fact. You didn't know that when you helped to make him a folk hero, right? No, I didn't know that. It's okay, George. <laughs> Work in the <laughs> garment <laughs> district. Work in the garment district, right. <laughs> it got to us a little bit about life in the Ozarks. What's the difference between life in the Ozarks and, 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 let's say, being a city slicker like London Lee? A little bit on growing up in the Ozarks, Mr. Oh, the Ozarks. Uh, you got those old Ozark mountains, those rolling hills, lots of green. Right. Pretty country. Nice people. Mm -hmm. What, nice state? people here too. what huh? state is that? That's in Missouri. It actually crosses uh, it's from the southern part of Missouri down and through Arkansas. And, you know, Missouri, they just built... One, one club after another, you could see, they'd say you could see 50 or 60 shows in Branson, Missouri. Right. It's about 30 miles from my uh, hometown there in Springfield. Oh, really? I'm, yeah. Because I know that because Larry Gatlin told me about it. The Gatlin yeah. brothers are friends of it's mine. A, it's a great place down there right now. Things are just really hot. As in a lot of great The acts. hottest city. As in carry me back to the Lone Prairie? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Almost, right? Yes, close. Those were, those were the good days, right? Those were the happy days. Remember the days of, uh, of uh, country music being all by itself before it became mass appeal, right? Sure, sure. As a matter of fact, uh, Springfield, Missouri there, uh, uh, back in the 50s, I guess Red Foley had uh, Ozark Jubilee out of there, and there was a big, uh, it was a big uh, wondering whether it was going to be Nashville or Springfield, Missouri, and I guess uh, the business went with Nashville. So uh, you like now it's starting to come back in the Branson area. So I love country. I, lo I love it, too. I like Me the too. sad ones, the, the ones that make you cry. Yes. <laughs> Introduce your partner, Mr. Preston. This is Jeff Sugarman, singer with me, guitarist. Uh, we've been uh, working together, doing some nightclubs down in Nashville, uh, a few here in, in, in New York. Uh, any, any comedy clubs? Out, you, know, you know, we had Eric Douglas here. The other. Eric Douglas told me that there were now four full-time channels doing comedy, 24-hour a day. I mean, how much could people oh, yeah, laugh? Channel 45 all day long. You're going to wear out your facial muscles. How much could you laugh that much? Yeah, what, what that's that's call, overkill, maybe, you know? They have, what they, call, <laughs> they have what they call the attention span theater. Yeah. You only can do a minute. <laughs> they figure that's how long everybody's attention span is for. So much comedy. 
Well, here's one of the young men who invented it. Want to see a sample of this lady's video? Give, yeah. give, give us a little bit on your theory on rap music. What's, what's part of your feeling well, or version on rap? Rap is growing. It's, it's a branch. I'm a branch of rap. I'm not from the root. I'm, I'm taking it into a little bit of a different direction. I'm playing with it a little bit more. I love rap. It's, it's it says that your music is very outspoken on American politics. Yes. Well, what, what do you want? What do you well, want? Well, it's a lot of different. Outspoken about life in general, about struggling, surviving, just life situations, things that I've been through. I love writing about it. What's one message maybe you're sharing with your young fans out there? What's one thing you want to put over maybe? Don't give up. No matter where you're from, no matter what you're doing in your life, don't give up. You can make it out of the hole you're in. Look at the new slogan of President Bush. His new slogan is, read my oh, resume. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> resume. He'll get by. A little bit of one of the videos of white girls with soul. <laughs> Just a teeny weeny sampling of what they tell me is a red hot new yes. group, and they've got heart and soul. A touch. The 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 Ed Sullivan would say at a time like this, London, a really big show. Or you like shoe. that? Shoe. Really love big it, love shoe. It. That's excellent. Thanks. That's beautiful. We've got the biggest variety show since that time. I give you a gentleman in the mood for sampling for London, for Serene. A little bit of, yes. uh, little bit of what they write here is going to be a, uh, not only an all-time, but beyond all-time holiday classic. And part of the message of pumping gas on Christmas Eve is uh, what's part of the uh, inner meaning this man has to work on that holiday is it oh yeah well uh, we were traveling across friends of mine were traveling across the south there during uh, christmas holidays one year and uh my friend looked up and saw this uh, gas station guy working out and the snow was coming down and uh, he happened to look at me and says you know that's a really sad image this guy having to work on christmas eve it's, you start realizing there's people all over the country who are having to work during that time of the year and uh, right london there are bills to pay and mouths right, to well, feed no, that's, right. Right. that's a so definite may we have a sampling sure be happy George. To. This is also a hot video and a hot record, but we've got him now in the flesh, right, Serene? I like in that name, flesh. Serene. A little bit of Mr. Preston and Mr. Sugarman. Thank you. Ready? Well, I'm pumping gas on Christmas Eve. Pumping gas tonight. I'm thinking about the baby Jesus as the stars shine bright can i wipe your windshield sir check that oil too pumping gas on christmas eve and probably christmas too yes i'm a working in a billing station on the eve of the lord's birthday because i got lots of Christmas bills from presents still to pay But in my mind I see my children's faces all aglow Susie's got her Barbie doll and Bill his G.I. Joe Above the fumes of gasoline I smell the Christmas tree Above the roar of semi-trucks, the Charoid voices sing. The angels they sing about that holy night and all that came to pass. And as I brush a tear away, I stand here pumping gas. The wind may whistle down my neck and bite right through my glove. But one thing makes it all worthwhile, God's gift of family love. A gift to last throughout the year and through the years that pass. So while God fills my heart with 
love I'll fill these tanks with gas Yes, I'm pumping gas on Christmas Eve Pumping gas tonight I'm pumping gas tonight I'm thinking about baby Jesus As the stars shine bright Shine so brightly Can I wipe your windshield, sir? Check that oil tip Pumping gas on Christmas Eve and probably Christmas too. That's great. Thank you. Oh, they're great, those two gentlemen. I was telling London and Serena that Mr. Barry Shapiro over here, attorney, distinguished attorney, lecturer, author, published in Newsday and Crane's New York Business, is obviously a firm booster and believer in the arts. And he might give us a uh, little rundown on his role in helping the Long Island Philharmonic Orchestra to avoid what might be known as financial disaster. And don't be shy, don't be modest. I won't be, believe me. It's uh, been quite a challenge. You know, the whole question of the survival of orchestras in the, in the United States is a difficult one. In this era of what they call fiscal cutbacks. Fiscal cutbacks and an aging audience. You know, our audience is getting older and it's not just the Long Island Philharmonic. There's a whole generation that has grown up that thinks that classical music is for dead people. Uh, that has never heard Mozart or Beethoven. And our audiences are getting older, and you couple that with the decline in government contributions and, and the economic turmoil. <laughs> and the economic turmoil, and you have orchestras across the country. Let me just tell you now, you, you said about uh, young people not knowing about the joys of what's modern. So maybe besides Mozart, besides Brahms, maybe a little bit of uh, Philip Glass or a little bit of sure. David Amram. Is that, is that a possibility? Uh, absolutely. Really? Our orchestra plays 20th century music all oh, the time. That's great. Consider, I didn't mean to break it. Uh, and uh, we've worked very hard to bring young people into here. Uh, classical music. To make it more exciting. Yeah, absolutely. We have a 35-year-old woman conductor, which is very unusual uh, in, in this day and age. And um, uh, our music is, is accessible, it's exciting, and we have programs where we go into the schools to uh, encourage young people to continue with the, the study of classical music, and then we bring them into uh, our, our concert hall to hear a philharmonic perform and to play, hear, play music that they're familiar with. Is the admission free sometimes? Or? For the young people concerts, absolutely. absolutely. London, we are uh, doing a tribute at the recommendation of many of the fans who are avid fans of the uh, Long Island Philharmonic to a man, uh, I don't want to say because he's the chairman, but this man helped and did much to uh, get him out of what they call economic uh, despair. And uh, we're proud of you. But that's great. Oh, that's, that's very nice. What that's else great. do you want the world to know, Barry, about Well, that? we have a New Year's Eve concert coming up. With? Uh, with Mr. Steve Allen. Really? Uh, yes. Um, at, um, obviously, New Year's Eve at 8 o'clock at the Tillis Center at uh, CW Post down on Long Island. We'll have champagne. We'll have fireworks, dinner and dancing. It's going to be a lot of fun. We had Marvin Hamlish with us last year, and we completely sold out. But this, the, the saving of the Long Island Philharmonic really goes to the uh, Long Island community, which rallied behind us when we were having some difficult times. Uh, the business community, um, the business, com uh, business community, and the community uh, in general. But if you're, uh, you know what I'm saying, London, if this man is trying to make his kind, and, and you too, Serena, I want your feeling, he's trying to make his kind of symphonic or classical music more exciting to the rock generation or to the, to the rock and roll or to the rap generation, people who have never known about the joys music. of symphonic concert Opera. going. The That's classics are the best. I watched last night on television, and I think you might have watched it too, I watched... Um, Placido Domingo. Mm -hmm. Did you see it? Yes, absolutely. With a 60-piece orchestra, but they were playing contemporary things, too. He, he had a contemporary arrangement on, of an old, of a standard, Brazil. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you saw that. It was marvelous. And the whole audience was young. Young. So it's, it's you know, it hasn't gone anywhere. It hasn't gone away. It's still here. Well, what we it's try bringing it out. What we try desperately to do is make sure that when people come in, they have a good time, that it's fun, that it's exciting. If we play music that's challenging, our conductor, Marin Alsop, speaks from the podium to explain the music to people, and our audience is growing. So you uh, young rock and rap devotee, hey. are you going to get, get involved in this? Well, I like, you know, certain type of operas and philharmonicas. Carmen Beretta, I don't really know her name. She did, like, The Omen and stuff, and 
I'm into classic rap. That would be different. Right. I, I just want to say that with, with a hundred musicians, I hope I'm a classical rap artist. With a hundred musicians, we can make as much noise as any I'm rap sure. rock group, uh, and we can do it without amplifiers. A hundred musicians would not well, help that's my the way voice. You do it. <laughs> We, got a we can only say to this man that I'm very honored and proud to have a distinguished, not only uh, writer, lecturer, attorney, but the man who helped to save the group. Now, how about uh, any phone number for people who want to know sure. more about <laughs> joining, participating, contributing, etc.? That would be That's great. 516-293-2222 huh? or 516-293-2223. One more time, one more time. 516-293-2222. Or five one six two nine three two 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 three. And now let's watch these numbers. You're watching a number one panel. I'll be right back. We hope you'll get uh, happily involved with the new season of this man's organization. Barry Shapiro was chairman of Yaletta Long Island Philharmonic. And your one wish for uh, the orchestra, for the world, you know, mix it up. It is is a peaceful, happy, and successful new year. You're going to tell your friends you met London Lee? That's oh, absolutely. Yeah, me too. Barry, being a lawyer, I, I knew you were a lawyer. I saw the shoes. <laughs> I could tell by the tie it's a definite lawyer. This is a guy who used to stand up for the teenagers. He now stands up for the 45-year-olds, right? I'll do it. Okay. I'll do it, whatever I got to do. I'm going on the road. I'm going on the road, and uh, uh, Selena and I... We're going together. A yeah, national tour. Together. Can you picture a Jewish rap? <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be home watching the Long Island Philharmonic, and uh, in a very symphonic way, we say, happy uh, 1993.